Hello there, Richie Stormtrooper here and I am back with some tips for you for building your Stormtrooper. In this case we're looking at strapping, the internal strapping system for your armour and in particular we're looking at the strapping kit that you can purchase from RS Prop Masters and I'm going to be having a little bit of a moan looking at some of the problems with it and how you can improve it yourself, some of the things you might want to replace. For those of you that have been following the channel, you will know that I am building a full set of RS Propmasters Stormtrooper armour and that this is one of the two sets that I actually do recommend. I recommend either RS Propmasters or Trooper Master. If you have not seen the video yet on my recommendations for where to purchase Stormtrooper armour, please do, do go back and watch that. You can see that by clicking on this link before you buy anything. Well worth a watch. Also, the videos on the types of armor which I do not recommend, you can find those here by clicking this link. And as I say, if you've been following the build tutorials, you will know that I am building a full set of RS Prop Masters armor. This is just a couple of the parts. For example, this is the biceps and the forearm. And you will also know that I opted to go with the full strapping kit that RS Prop Masters supply. And on the whole, it's great. I would still recommend that you go with this, um, especially if you've no experience of making this kind of kit yourself. If you don't really know the exact dimensions, exactly the, all the different components of what belongs in a strapping kit, then definitely go for this. It's going to save you a lot of time and a lot of hassle, and you probably won't be able to do it for the same price yourself either, because they're making a lot of these and pumping them out there experience with this they know exactly what to get and be sourcing the materials in bulk etc etc however there are some problems with this kit for me there are some disappointing aspects to it i'm going to start off then by looking at the actual grade of the material itself this is the 25 millimeter tape elastic tape which is included eventually for making stuff like this this is something that i've made myself these are the short elastic loops that we use to connect this kind of thing that go inside the armour. I'll show you that now on my armour. These are the loops that hold the whole thing together in conjunction with these brackets. Now, I said I was going to actually start with the, looking at the grade of the material itself, the quality of the material itself. Um, one slightly disappointing factor is that you do not receive these loops ready-made. You just receive one length of elastic and you're then left to your own devices to make these loops up yourselves. A quick tip then at this stage, these want to be sewn so that you want a length slightly more than three centimeters so that you can put a seam in there and make the loop itself three centimeters in length. But before I got distracted we were indeed talking about the grade of the material. Now I've had a lot of different types of no-name brand, branded um, elastics tape in my hands over the years and I've pretty much broken it down into three categories. My experience has shown that there's been, you can get hold of stuff very very cheaply but it's very 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 soft and very very weak and it's really absolutely not worth buying at all. And on the other end of the scale what I have found has been worth investing a few more pennies in over the over the years is um, branded stuff which is really the strongest type you can get now I use here in Germany uh, certainly you can get it all the way through Europe I used it in Spain as well um, a brand name prim and you want the elastic band elastic tape strong it's the strongest one they have they have a, a, a less strong version which really doesn't cut it for me um, so I've always gone for that and found it absolutely great in all the different sizes as well. This is the 50 millimeter in width. It's the same grade, and this is the 75 millimeters width stuff. Um, they do all the different widths, and that's the one that I always go for. Now, also you can get stuff which is sold on eBay with under no particular name brand. It's listed as being strong. And it is a lot stronger than the really cheap stuff you can buy. And my instincts tell me that this is what you get in your strapping kit with RS Prop Masters. It's a lot better than the really cheap stuff. 
but it's not the really good stuff. Now, I also looking at it, I also think that the pattern matches the original elastics rather well. This is the, the really strong stuff from Prim, as, as an example, has a really tight mesh structure. This is a little more open and a little weaker. Um, I would say this is fine for stuff like this, the little stuff, the, the, everything that's going to be 25 millimeters in width, particularly the loops because they're doubled over, they're doubled in strength if you like because it's, it's folded over and sewn. You're not going to have any problem with the 25 millimeter stuff. Um, neither are you with the, here there's the 25 millimeter stuff, sorry the 50 millimeter stuff that goes inside the forearms and the biceps armor. Bear in mind, you want to get this very, very um, tight anyway, so the actual slack between, there's just a bit of residue of glue on there that um, I need to clean up, that will clean up if you're using E6000, can't worry about that so much, but as you can see, if you want this to look right anyway, um, I've seen other build tutorials, if you want to see my build tutorial on this, on building this part, please go back and watch this video, click this link here. I've seen um, plenty of tutorials where this is um, far too sp spaced far too wide apart. Um, you want to get it close. When it's extended, when both parts are laid out straight, i.e. not you, or your elbow's not flexed, they certainly want to be touched, touching, and I say even more than flush, so that it's on a slight, it's tensioned at a slight angle, so you can't quite get it completely straight out. We don't want any gap between there. The point of this little diversion being that you don't have much slack here, the rest is glued firmly into the armour and the stuff you get with RS Propmasters um, strapping kit is going to do you fine. That said, I don't fancy using the really wide stuff for the thighs. I will do a separate tutorial on making up, again this comes, it, it, it's not ready made. You've got to um, imagine, imagine for a moment this is our belt which we're going to wear around the, the waist like so. You're going to um, want to sew these into loops to fit over the belt because these are going to connect on one side to your thighs, thigh armour and hold that up around your belt. I know from experience this is one area where the arm is going to be under quite a lot of strain. What I find is to make your armour comfortable, you have to get that really tight up, so you have to have it slightly uh, under tension. You want it really pulling the, the thighs up as high as they can. There's nothing more uncomfortable if you're trying to walk as a stormtrooper, if you've got your thighs too low. You'll find that they will pinch behind the knees, in that sensitive area behind at the back of the knee, where it meets with the calf armour, and it will restrict your walking. So we want something that's going to take a bit of strain and my instinct is that this is maybe good enough for a while, but it's going to be worth your while. Bearing in mind that this is not ready sewn. This is, as I say, another slight disappointment with the, with the strapping kit from RS Prop Master's kit. Like the elastic loops, this is not ready sewn for you. So bear that in mind when you are buying the strapping kit that in general it's going to save you a lot of work. It's very unlikely that you're going to want to build these wire brackets yourself, it's a very time consuming matter, alone just for that it's worth getting all the kit, then there's all kinds of um, bits and bobs, the, the hooks on here that have been sourced to the right side, all the press studs that are a reasonable match for the originals, but I would say replace this, um, it's, it's okay, you don't need to, but get something that's really really strong, I find that that's a, a key place, so I'm going to toss that out, use my own strong branded, extra strong branded elastic and make my own straps for my thighs. There's another part of the strapping kit that definitely needs attention in my opinion and these are the white straps with hooks which go inside the calf armour. I'll show you on this calf just how those work, we've got a tutorial on that, if you want to see that go back and watch this video, click on this link. These are the elastic strips that fit inside the armour there and are used 
as you can see this is one of the problems that I've, I've already faced I've I've installed these already in the in the car farmer and this hook is designed to hook into this hole we've drilled on the other side and it keeps the armor together at the back of the calf now you've seen how fiddly that is for me even though I'm not wearing it and you can see that's already subject to a lot of fraying and it's very loose in there this is definitely needs some um, attention I would say the elastic itself is fine it's going to be a case of this is going to be mainly glued into the armor anyway it's relatively good good quality and there's not going to be a lot of slack and you don't want something that's going to be permanently tensioned anyway it's you want to leave it relatively flexible because you you get quite a movement in there anyway however this hook don't know how well you can see but it's basically this is the elastic folded over like so and the hooks placed on top and the only stitches in there are just two little points where the hook connects and the front of the hook is left free floating like that now this may well have been accurate it may well reflect how the originals were made I doubt it to be honest and what I recommend definitely recommend and what I'm going to be doing is to start from scratch cut that off it's not going to help us a great deal open that up start again get those two little stitches out and if you're planning on using this armor wearing this armor taking it on off on and off more than once or twice you're really going to need to start afresh i would recommend folding it over a little bit wider something like that give us a better surface and first the first stage would be either by hand or using a machine sew this completely all along so that that's completely closed that's going to give you a lot more strength because otherwise as you've seen on here this is this is fraying terribly already it's right near the edge where that's it's really just hanging on the thread now that hook's not going to last very much longer and I've not even put these on more than once just to try them on whilst I was building the armor so fold that over make a proper sew all along there sew that completely all along the width make that a lot stronger and then this is very important sew your hook on you want the, the hook to be flush with the edge there don't just sew it here at this end where the where the eyes are for sewing the hook in place put a couple of stitches between between the material so that it loops over here passes through passes through this part through there and holds that all down I'll show you that when I've finished that but you're going to find it's a lot easier to open and close if this hook isn't flapping around it gives you a good surface to take hold of here you can get hold of the elastic and put that in place it really does make a world of difference Stage one then, as you can see, it doesn't have to be the neatest, but that's going to be a whole lot more secure. Just a quick run of stitches across there. On to stage two then. OK, 
get that lined up there with the edge the edge of the hook flush with the edge of the strap and then go through those two as you can see it's anything but neat but that's not really the issue here you want more than these couple of stitches here and the next bit is the most important important part take your needle forward and over there underneath the hook through the other side and back again all the way up to the end of the hook so right in there through this between the, hook, the two bits of the hook down back into our elastic strap because we don't want that end of the hook to be free floating anymore we want to stop this effect we want that firmly in place does it look nice? no it doesn't but it's going to last a hell of a lot longer and it's going to be a lot easier to use right then that's the elastic straps for the shins reworked and reinstalled I've got my hands full of glue uh, now way behind my schedule but I think it was an important thing to revise the strapping kit and I'm definitely happier with the way these are looking now and these will work a lot better. I hope the video was interesting or useful for you. If so, please do like and subscribe for more content like this and I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care.